In the TikTok era, this song Hello darkness, my old friend has become the stuff of legend. It's taken on a life of its own. It's been used in all sorts of videos to convey a sort of comedic desolation. But what a lot of younger people using the sound may not realize is that the version that we all know and love is actually an unauthorized mix of the original. And it was the launching point for Simon and Garfunkel's whole career. A career that was begun by a black producer named Tom Wilson, without whom we likely wouldn't know the names Simon and Garfunkel at all. I'm Dara Star Tucker and this is the breakdown. A 21-year-old Paul Simon wrote The Sound of Silence over a period of many months in 1963 and 1964. He had this habit of writing in the bathroom. He says the solitude helped him to focus. He'd go in the bathroom and he'd turn out all of the lights. Hence, the first line of the song. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And he would often turn the faucet on because he found the sound to be soothing. The sound of silence. Within the sound. Silence. The song has been thought to reflect the feeling of alienation that many young people were experiencing at the time. There was a growing counterculture movement afoot in the mid-1960s. Things were changing. After the assassinations of civil rights leader Medgar Evers in June of 1963 and President John F. Kennedy in November of 1963, the mood of the country had become much more somber. Younger audiences were becoming a lot more receptive to music with themes of social justice and self-examination. By April of 1964, it was clear that the sound of American rock music was undergoing a seismic shift. The British invasion was underway. A group called The Birds released their version of Bob Dylan's song called Mr. Tambourine Man that ushered in the folk rock movement. Now, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel were a struggling folk music duo in Greenwich Village in New York at the height of the folk pop movement in the early 60s. They began performing in the late 1950s under the stage names Tom and Jerry and later on Kane and Gar. But by 1964, they decided to use their own names. They were seeing the careers of people like Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, and the Kingston Trio take off, but they weren't seeing much success on their own. At the clubs they performed at in the village, they would often run into a guy named Tom Wilson. Tom was something of an anomaly. He was a black record producer at a time Time when black folks had very little power within the industry. But Tom would soon manage to parlay his career as a jazz producer into a career producing some of the earliest folk rock acts at Columbia Records. Tom Wilson would go on to produce Bob Dylan's legendary album, Bringing It All Back Home, where Dylan famously went electric. It was Tom's influence that steered Dylan away from the puritanical devotion to acoustic music and into a hybrid folk rock sound that pissed off a lot of his devoted fans. Well, Tom was hanging out at a club called Gerda's Folk City in September of 1963, when Simon and Garfunkel performed a version of The Sound of Silence. When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light. Oddly enough, the song was a bit of a joke even then. Patrons would sometimes repeat the first line to each other for a laugh. Nevertheless, the song caught Tom's ear, but he wasn't entirely convinced that the group would be a good fit for Columbia. Paul Simon pleaded with him to let them come to Columbia Records and do a proper audition in their studio. And Tom finally relented. That audition, where they again performed their acoustic version of The Sound of Silence, got them signed to Columbia Records. Tom Wilson would produce the duo's debut album called Wednesday Morning 3 AM. It was recorded in March of 1964 and released in October. With the cover's exclamation that the album contained exciting new sounds and folk music, it was clear that the project really wasn't attempting to move the needle forward in terms of artistic risk. They were straightforward folk artists and nothing more. Here's what the original all-acoustic version of the song sounded like. But my words like silent raindrops fell. But that Birds album, released just a month after the recording of Wednesday Morning 3 AM, caught record producer Tom Wilson's ear. Folk rock was here, and lighter fare like Simon and Garfunkel's debut project just didn't hold the appeal that it once would have. The album, released in October of 1964, went nowhere. It was a commercial failure, and it led to Simon and Garfunkel finally disbanding for good this time. Or at least they thought so. After that, Paul Simon moved to Europe, where he recorded a solo album, and Garfunkel went back to college at Columbia University. The duo was still technically signed to Columbia Records, but they were effectively finished. But then, something truly unexpected happened. In the spring of 1965, a DJ at radio station WBZ in Boston started playing The Sound of Silence during his late night shift. Students at Harvard and Tufts universities started asking for it by name. The track started to make its way down the East Coast all the way to Florida as those students went on spring break. When producer Tom Wilson was alerted to the song's rising popularity, he considered giving it another wide release, but 
he wasn't sure it had the right ingredients to become a national hit. By June of 1965, he was deep in production on Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone album. So after one of the sessions was finished, he asked the band to stick around and do an overdub on The Sound of Silence. He figured that if he could capture that blend of folk rock that was sweeping the airwaves, the song would have a better chance of finding its second wind. So they all agreed to stay and do overdubs on The Sound of Silence without Simon and Garfunkel's knowledge. The band did the best they could to play in time with the original track. Simon and Garfunkel weren't playing with a metronome or any other timekeeping device. If you listen closely, you can hear the band audibly slow their rhythm down to allow the vocals to catch up at one point. Just listen. It was a bit of a clunky process, but the overdubs gave the track just the lift that Tom Wilson was going for. The new version had a real crescendo and it felt a lot edgier, more modern. He was sure that it had the makings of a true hit song. And he was right. He released it in September of 1965 and it started to quickly climb the Billboard charts. In the fall of 1965, Paul Simon was performing at small clubs in Denmark. He picked up a copy of Billboard magazine and lo and behold, the sound of silence was at the top of the charts. He was gobsmacked. Art Garfunkel called him ecstatic a few days later, letting him know exactly what happened. Paul Simon finally got to hear the remixed version the next day when he got the single in the mail, and he was horrified. He didn't like it at all. He could hear the band bucking and bowing, trying to find their rhythm to align with the original track. He thought it was a mess, but they had a hit on their hands. By the first week of January 1966, the song had risen to number one. In total, it spent 14 weeks on the Billboard Top 100 chart. Paul Simon flew back right away and they quickly recorded a second album, aptly titled The Sounds of Silence, to capitalize on the song's popularity. They put that same remixed track on the new album. They didn't even bother to re-record it. Why mess with a winning formula? The song and the group were catapulted to icon status when they were chosen to provide the soundtrack for the 19. 67 film, The Graduate, starring Dustin Hoffman. Had it not been for the vision of producer Tom Wilson, the world may never have experienced this once-in-a-generation anthem. At a recent career retrospective in honor of Paul Simon, put on by the Recording Academy, Paul sang this song as his finale. Hello darkness, my friend. He sang those familiar lyrics, which seemed almost prophetic and had become more poignant with time. Because of vision softly creeping. He spoke of the vision that had been planted in his brain long ago and still remained. And the vision that was planted in my brain. And with a lifetime of experience in his voice, he split the night and touched the sound of silence. Sound. 